close your eyes and stay with the breath. Try to make this the one object you're focused on. Other things come in the range of your awareness. You don't have to comment on them. You don't have to, as I say, clap their hand. There's the sound of the birds, but just let it be there. You don't have to comment on it. Trying to make the mind quiet. That's what the monastery is all about. It's a place to be quiet. And John Swite used to call this his, our quiet corner here. And people come here for the peace and quiet. But then they make a lot of noise. It's like a family that came to what Dhamma said at one time. It was living on the top of a hill there. And they came up and they were commenting how quiet it was, and they pulled out a boombox and turned on the boombox. So we all want quiet, but then we destroy the quiet. And John Sawat's image was of water buffaloes that like to have nice, clean water to drink, but then they lie down in the water and get it all muddy. So an important part of the practice is not just what you do when you're sitting with your eyes closed, but as you're going on and engaging with other people. If you're going to break the silence, make sure that it serves a real purpose. And John Fung's test was, is this necessary? If it's not necessary, don't say anything. You're safer when you're quiet. You, don't, you have less chance to say things that will disturb other people, less chance to get into arguments. We can maintain some of the quiet that we all come here for. I mean, there are places out in the world where you can talk. There are lots of places. You can sit home alone and turn on your computer and just chat away. Here's a place, though, where everybody wants to be quiet. That's part of being an admirable friend of the people around you. As you set a good example, and you also don't disturb their peace of mind. So try to be extra careful, extra scrupulous about when you open your mouth and when you don't. Make sure that what you say is true and beneficial and timely. That's three tests that has to pass before it comes out your mouth. It should take some time before it comes out. Otherwise, everything just turns into the world and would look at, look at the world as like outside. People shouting at each other all the time, nobody can hear themselves think, and that's why they can't think straight. If you want to think straight, you want to understand your mind clearly, you've got to be as quiet as possible. And your gift to other people is that you're quiet as well. When you do say things, make sure that your words are valuable, otherwise it's it's like fruit in a market. If there's lots and lots and lots of fruit, it begins to lose its value. If there's only one avocado in the whole market, because that avocado would have a very high price. But if the tables are piled with avocados, it's, sometimes you can't even give them away. It's the same with your words. The more things come flowing, flowing, flowing out, the less value they have. So be very parsimonious in your words, and they'll have more value. And also remember that silence is often the best thing you can give to someone else. Help them maintain their silence. That's how we maintain the, the quietness of this quiet corner. That is Jean Suat and all the people who built the monastery went to such trouble to build. <laughs>